What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're continuing our top 5 peripheral series of the year with the top 5 gaming and streaming microphones from 2020. And to make it interesting, we're going to break it up into 3 different categories really. One, which is what I think the best microphone on a gaming headset. Then we have the budget category. And then the more expensive sort of options here on this list. But either way, all five in terms of microphone quality sound really, really good. And they're some of the best, like I said, this year that I've tested. So if you want to check any of them out, I'll have it all listed for you in the description down below. And just disclaimer, please make sure you're wearing headphones so you can hear the actual, you know, best audio quality that you're going to be getting from this video. And all mic tests are going to be raw and unedited unless noted otherwise for comparison's sake. Now, starting off, I'm actually using one of these microphones right now for this entire intro. And the microphone I'm using only costs $50. That is going to be the Razer Siren Mini. So let's start off with that. So yes, for just $50, this is definitely setting the bar high, as you could hear, because this sounds incredibly good for that price point. And honestly, it's just downright shocking. And I'm really not even being dramatic. Like you can hear for yourself how good this sounds for just 50 bucks. In terms of the actual build and the quality itself, I like how it's a super small and simple sort of just capsule, pretty much. Very tiny and compact, so it's not gonna take up much room on your desktop at all. It does come on the included flexible stand. It's kind of like a ball head, so you can angle it uh, just to pick up your vocal pattern the best. And in terms of options, as you can see, we have it in black here, but it's also available in white and pink, like the other Razer peripheral color options. Now, inside is a 14 millimeter capsule that is super cardioid. So the pickup pattern is gonna be very precise and picking up what's going on right here and with that super cardioid pickup pattern and the actual condenser they use it gives you a very flat response so your voice is going to be just very accurate and true to your natural tone and what we're going to do for all these tests before we head back to the pc and do more in-depth testing is a quick little sound test with an actual keyboard in the background to emulate that gaming and streaming sort of situation where your keyboard is by your microphone so we'll see how well it does at picking up the keyboard sounds with this super cardioid pickup pattern. And the keyboard I'm using is the HyperX Alloy Origins Core TKL with their Aqua switches that are tactile. So they're not super clicky like blue switches and they're not linear and quiet like red switches. They're kind of the best of both worlds, uh, which is why I picked this. So I'm just gonna be talking, you know, doing some typing and stuff. Again, you're playing some games, you're chatting with your friends, you're typing on your keyboard, you're gaming, you're having a good time, maybe you're having a bad time. This, like I said, just to give you an idea of how this microphone does at picking up that background noise. Now we're gonna head back to the PC and do a little bit more in-depth testing. Okay, so for this next portion, what we're going to do is do a quick little mic test and show you the just background noise floor when in complete silence. So you can get a general idea of pretty much just the general area of your desktop. And that includes with my PC in the background, so you can hear how it does with that. And that has, I believe, seven fans in my PC. So we'll be able to judge how it does it picking up at that. And just real quick, uh, yes, for this entire, you know, at the PC uh, portion, I made sure in my sound settings that all sound enhancements were were turned off by default and that the highest possible bit rate and sample rate was turned on in the sound control settings. Uh, this is possible of 16 bit, 44.1 kilohertz to 48 kilohertz sample rate. So now real quick, let's do that for you. This is a mic test for the Razer Siren Mini for $50. One, two, three sibilance. One, two, three sibilance. Okay, so just honestly judging from that quick little sound test here and seeing the noise floor at the end, very, very impressive. And naturally, this mic was hitting when I was talking between negative 12 and negative 16 decibels, which is definitely what you want because that way it's not going to be close to peaking. You can always enhance it afterwards. But it sounds really good. And that noise floor, extremely low, usually hitting between 59 and just, you know, negative infinity decibels. So it does a really, really good job with eliminating background noise. And um, again, PC right here, seven fans going, and you can see just pretty much picking up nothing, nothing audible at least. So really, for just $50, I am super shocked and surprised at the actual sound quality we get here from the Razer Siren Mini. And I've tested other Razer microphones in the past that have been like quadruple the price of this. And honestly, this is their best sounding microphone for just 50 bucks. Super, super impressive here. 
Okay, next up for just $60, we have the new HyperX SoloCast microphone, which is pretty much like the little brother, smaller version of their very popular HyperX Quadcast. So here, much more affordable. And again, as you can hear, sounds very good. Now there are no four different pickup patterns like we had on the Quadcast here. They're cutting it down to the basics with just this cardioid pickup pattern. And it has a few extra things like a touch sensitive mic mute button up top and a red little LED on the front, which will just be constant when it is active. Then when you want to mute it, you press the button up top and this will blink red to let you know it is muted. So like we saw on the Siren Mini, uh, the included stand here is pretty small and tiny, which is by the way, why I have these mics propped up if you didn't quite get that, uh, just so it's more in line with my mouth. So yes, a smaller stand. One thing I do like about this is you can actually uh, tilt it 90 degrees sideways and it makes this very satisfying clicking sound as you do. But obviously you can remove this from this included stand and use this on your own mic arm if you want. And flipping it over on the bottom side, there is a thread there. It's a 5 8 inch thread for adapting this to whatever stand or arm you have. And then like we did before with the typing test in the background, I feel like this is probably even going to be a little bit over dramatic in a sense because when you are gaming, you're not constantly pressing down like you are when you are typing like this. This is more of like a typing test because when you are gaming, you're really only pressing what three, four keys at once if you're in like a heated scenario, like an FPS where you're moving all the time. So this might be a little bit louder than your average you know, situation while gaming. But again, just to judge how it does at eliminating the background. Okay, so same story now with the HyperX solo cast. We are at the 48 kilohertz sample rate at 16 bits, which is the highest possible sample rate this goes. And the electric condenser mic inside with the cardioid pickup pattern is gonna be, you know, the main uh, capsule inside for this. So again, quick little mic test and background test. This is a mic test for the HyperX solo cast for $60. One, two, three sibilants. One, two, three, sibilance. Okay, so one thing I want to point out from that quick mic test we did is this is naturally a bit of a louder microphone. I actually had to turn the gain down around six decibels because otherwise it was definitely hitting around like negative one, negative two. So it was very close to peaking and being too loud. So I did turn it down a little bit just to make it more uh, natural and not as loud for you guys. So keep that in mind. You will probably have to adjust the gain once you get it in. But it's also going to depend on where you have this situated in front of your mouth and how you have it mounted. Um, and also noise floor, again, because it is a bit louder, it was hovering between, I'd say, uh, minus 45 and like minus 48. So then once I did lower it again, we were getting around uh, minus 50 decibels. Uh, but yeah, again, not too bad, all things considered, uh, just a little bit louder. So do keep that in mind. Okay, so next up at number three, obviously breaking into the new genre here. We started off with those two budget mics. Now we have the gaming headset microphone. This is the Drop in Sennheiser PC38X. This retails for $169. And obviously it's gonna be a bit different than your normal desktop microphone because this is really the best of both worlds. This is one of my favorite headsets of 2020. And honestly, I think this is one of the best sounding microphones I've heard on a headset. And the reason I'm including this is because obviously with just a separate desktop microphone, you still need to have headphones. With a headset, it's both in one, and these sound phenomenal. I'm sure you're familiar with Sennheiser. The quality here is crazy. The sound is so, so good coming out of these. And they're also open back, so you get a very, very wide sound stage. And even though 170 is pretty pricey for a headset, this is like, end game headset. If you pick this up, you're never gonna need another gaming headset in the future. That's just my honest belief. I absolutely love these. And like I said, it also has a really, really great sounding microphone. So we're gonna head back to the PC, do the sound test there, obviously. Okay, so now you're hearing the mic for the Drop in Sennheiser PC38X. You might be thinking to yourself, like, oh, it doesn't sound that good. But I want you to keep in mind, this is after you just heard very good sounding desktop separate microphones. So this for a headset sounds very, very good, even though, you know, compared to those, it might not sound like it. For a gaming headset, this, I believe, is one of the best sounding mics you can find on a headset. It's just very natural and full, which is, you know, what you want out of your headset and what you want out of a microphone. And I know you might not believe me, but please go back to my top 
five gaming headsets of 2020 video. That was, what, maybe two weeks ago at this point? And you can hear, out of all those top headsets of the year, this microphone, I believe, is the best out of all of them. So you can hear how they sound stacked up to each other, back to back to back of other headsets, even though here in this list, it might not stack up that well to dedicated desktop microphones. I did want to point that out. Now, the actual mic they're using here is actually bi-directional, and it is an electric condenser mic, but it does have noise canceling built in. So it is going to be picking up pretty much what's going on right here and right here behind it, uh, but with their noise canceling built in, pretty much trying to eliminate that. So since we didn't get to do it at the actual desktop behind me, I have the same uh, keyboard here. And we'll just do a quick little typing test and stuff. Again, just so you can judge how it does at picking up that background noise and my voice at the same time. Now, like I said, just remember, keep in mind, this is not really being fairly compared in this test. I understand that. Uh, but for a dedicated mic, this or for a dedicated headset, sorry, I think this is just one of the best out there. Another test real quick. This is a mic test for the Drop and Sennheiser PC38X headset for $169. Nice. One, two, three sibilants. One two, three, sibilants. And okay, just judging that dead noise floor, as you could hear with that background noise elimination it has in this mic, uh, there is practically zero. There is nothing going on that you can hear in the background. Nothing that's audible, at least. So that's very, very impressive. And again, just for the price of this overall headset as a two-in-one microphone and gaming headset, pretty much, absolute top of the line, I think. Okay, so for this next one, we're gonna stay right here at the PC for the rest of this testing because these next two pretty much require us to be at our PC, and they also involve some software to a degree. So right here at number four is the Elgato Wave 3. This comes in usually MSRP for around 155. I've seen it the last week for around like 140 even. So price on this is fluctuating. And this is the you know more premium version of their Wave 1 microphone. This one has a few extra features. So first off, up top is a touch sensitive mute button. Um, on the bottom here, there is a dial and there's three different things you can do with this. One is for controlling the gain of your actual microphone. The second is for actually controlling uh, the monitor mix. If you want to plug in like headphones to monitor your audio, you can adjust the gain for your headphones as well. And then the third is sort of a mix of that. So you could balance out your voice and the actual, uh, what you're hearing from your headphones. So if I'm plugged in, you know, playing some games and I have the actual PC audio coming to the mic, I can then monitor the and balance the sort of levels of that. So you have some really good features with this built in. And I like the fact that you just have that, you know, dial right here um, showing you the three different pretty much options you can control. And this is what the Wave 1 does not have. So with the Wave 3, you're getting that upgrade with the actual real-time controls here right on the front. And I will note that the actual uh, shock mount and pop filter is additional. Uh, I believe they're 40 bucks each, something like that. Uh, so these do not actually come with the actual mic. So the main thing about this is, uh, let's just say the main selling point to the Wave and the Wave 3 is the Wavelink software. The Wavelink software is really, really cool, and it's a great tool for gamers, streamers, pretty much anybody doing anything with this mic. So I'll be showing you the Wavelink software in more detail in just a second, but first, about the actual capsule they're using inside this microphone, it is a 17 millimeter electric condenser mic and has a cardioid pickup pattern. That's you know the main thing you're gonna see with a lot of these microphones. And it's actually possible of doing 24 bit, 96,000 hertz recording sampling. So that means you're pretty much getting double of the traditional 48. Uh, kilohertz, which is pretty crazy. Now, are you going to be using that, you know, for streaming? Odds are probably not. 48 is the standard. 48 is going to be just fine. Uh, but you do have that capability of 96 kilohertz for, you know, podcasting or, you know, maybe even going in further and editing your microphone and your quality from that. You have more, you know, room and more quality uh, with that higher sample rate. But odds are you'll be using this at just 48 kilohertz. So back to Wavelink, okay? This is really special. So as you can see right here in the software, uh, the Wave 3 is, you know, what I'm talking into. You can see it there real time. 
But underneath, you have two separate icons. This is the monitor mix, which is what I would be hearing out of my headphones. And then this is the stream mix, which is what you can output into your stream. And that's where it gets really interesting when you start to tie it to OBS and any sort of streaming software, is you actually have up to nine different sort of channels and inputs that you can add into the Wavelink software. This makes it so you can do different submixes for different channels. So for example, right now, you're hearing me. If I wanted to add, you know, just say a game, uh, that can that, you go into there, you add a game, and then in your sound settings, you tie it to that. All right, then real quick, I just deleted the music input to show you real time. So you would go to an audio input. We can just say again, music, if you want some background music going on. And then you go to the sound panel button, which will bring up your sound settings. Go down to Spotify, for example. And then for the output, you tie this then to Wavelink. You gotta find then just Wavelink music. So let's see, where, oh, where'd it go? Let's try that again. You go back to Wavelink, and then Wavelink, where is music? Down here. Okay, so now what you see over here is the actual Spotify going in the background. So then if I wanna turn it up and just be blasting it on my end, you can see this is going, this is playing music in the background, but I don't hear that. You know why? Because then I turn headphones down. So I don't hear what's going on with this background track, and you can do this for pretty much anything, but the stream hears it. Now, for example, if I wanted to keep this same thing going, but not have the audience hear it, you know, for example, if it was something with like copyright music, where I want to be playing some tracks, but I don't want the background, or I don't want the, the audience to hear that, so I don't get a copyright strike, whatever, I can have it so I'm listening to it 100%, and the stream is listening to it at 0%. And then you can go in and balance you know, what you hear, whether it's the monitor mix or the stream mix, and then tie each of those mixes to different channels for your outputs for streaming or whatever. It was a pretty rough, you know, quick example of the software itself, but that is the main selling point to Wavelink, is the fact that you have all these different submixes that you can go in and balance and sort of mix up what you hear versus what the audience is hearing all real time. You just have a ton of flexibility. Now, now we'll do that, you know, sound test again, like I said before, uh, with the actual dead noise. This is the mic test for the Elgato Wave 3 microphone for around $150. One, two, three, sibilance. One, two, three, sibilance. Okay, so you heard that, and real quick, we will do the typing and uh, gaming test for you so you can hear the actual background noise now uh, of the keyboard versus my voice when I'm talking, uh, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, we will judge that background uh, noise floor test in just one second. All right, so for that test overall, not too bad. It does seem to be hovering um, around like negative 53 and negative 56, anywhere between there for that background noise. Uh, but again, you have that flexibility then to on the fly, just change up and maybe lower your gain or adjust it because you have those built-in controls here. So for 150, you're getting a pretty good sounding microphone capable of being you know, uh, processed more and bit edited more with that 96,000 hertz uh, sampling rate. But the big thing is, again, Wavelink software and the actual just on the fly controls. So that's gonna be the main selling point here. That's gonna be why people want this because Wavelink gonna make your life a lot, a lot easier. And honestly, 150 really isn't too bad for the overall package you get with this. Okay, then last but not least, we have the Shure MV7. This retails for $250. So the more expensive option on this list, but for the total package, this is my favorite microphone of the year for a lot of reasons. Now, Shure is a very popular company, and this microphone is uh, pretty unique. So first off, not only am I over USB, recording onto my PC, but via XLR, I'm also feeding this into my camera. So I can record two different channels at once. Is everybody gonna need to do this? No, but in, for this exact situation where I'm testing this and giving you different examples of how they sound versus these simple outputs, it, uh, it works great, it works perfect. So for this portion, I'll bounce back and forth and show you visually what you're listening to. But yes, you have both XLR and you have the USB audio connection uh, to plug to your PC, which can also use their uh, Motive software. So before we get into that stuff, uh, right now, 
let's just go over it real quick the features. So first off, this does come on this yoke pretty much, uh, but it does not come with a stand or an arm. This is on an arm that I already have. I'll drop it down below so you can check it out. But yes, it does not come with one. You just get the microphone and this little stand or the, uh, the yoke right here. Now you also have, which is pretty interesting, uh, some built-in controls up front. You can't see it at this angle probably, but you do have a touch sensitive, pretty much a gain dial, so you could swipe it up and down. You can mute the mic on the fly, so I like having those touch sensitive controls just right here in front of you. So that way when you're gaming and streaming, if you don't have you know mic levels already pulled up on your PC, you could see here up top, if you are peeking, just turn it down real quick, a little swipe of a finger movement, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so one of the things I really like about this is the uh, the Motive software gives you a lot of different flexibility when it comes to actually changing up how the mic sounds because you do have some different EQs and different options with the Motive software. So for example, real quick, this is just the auto levels. When you plug it in, when you don't download anything, this is just the auto level, this, the stock sound signature of the MB7. Uh, this is at the near and the natural setting, and of course you can also go in and mute it here if you want and adjust the monitor mix. But what I really like is the different tones they provide. So for example, now I am on the dark tone for the near mic position setting. And for my voice, I think this complements my voice um, probably better because I do have just a naturally a deeper voice. So when you add the dark tone to it, I think it gives you that real cinematic sort of sound that I prefer. Um, again, back to natural, this is going to be kind of just, yeah, I would say a more natural sound. And it's a good in-between spot between the dark tone and now the bright tone. So this bright tone right here, uh, what this does is it kind of really, you know, obviously just it's gonna sound stupid, but it brightens it up. It gives you sort of more clarity and sort of more detail in your voice. Uh, so yeah, between those, I, like I said, I really like dark, uh, but you can also go far. So for example, say, you know, I don't want the microphone right in my face if I am gaming or streaming, and I wanna just sort of add some separation between myself and the actual mic, uh, you have the far. Uh, the far setting to do that, and we're currently on dark. Um, I think in this situation, at the far setting, uh, natural is what sounds the best by far, um, just because it does a good job of, again, mixing the different tones and adjusting and compensating for the distance away from your mouth. So again, natural and far. And then real quick over to bright, which still sounds pretty good. Um, I would have picked definitely natural or bright over dark at the far setting, uh, but I think natural sounds best at far. And then bringing it back to us uh, for near, again, near and dark sounds really good. And this is all just on the auto level. So now, if I want, if I want to go to the manual settings up here, we have a few more options. There's different options for uh, adjusting the monitor mix, your mic gain, and you have some built-in EQs. So right now, we're on flat. There's also a high pass filter, a presence boost, and both a high pass and presence boost. So just to show you that real quick for the actual just manual adjustments. Again, I didn't adjust gain or anything yet, uh, but this right now is the high pass and presence boost. If you want, you can throw on a limiter. And also you have compressor options from light, medium to heavy. So I'll just throw on light real quick so you can start to get a difference. If we were here going over every piece of this software and doing a mic test for each dedicated you know, manual setting, we'd be here for hours. So just again, show you real quick what you can do with manual versus the auto, auto levels near and dark. So you have a lot of flexibility. Um, but like I said, I think right here is where it sounds the best. And you still have that option to either plug in via USB or again, right then, right over to the actual, an XLR, if you have like an audio interface or like this to a camera, you have just, uh, so much flexibility with this microphone. And for 250, I think it is hands down an absolute steal. Uh, so now then real quick, I will type and I'll be doing some testing and typing and stuff. And just for example, real quick, when I said type, I saw this peak a little bit, which is an added benefit of that uh, little uh, screen on the front. I, I definitely have some pretty aggressive plosives with my mouth. So it was really useful to be able to see that peaking in real time. So if I want, then I can go in and adjust the game. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to do a dead noise background test. This is the mic test for the Shure MV7 microphone, which retails for $250. This is plugged in via XLR into my audio interface from Audient, the Evo 4. One, two, three, sibilance. One, two, three, sibilance.
And now for an additional comparison with still the MV7, this is now the USB connection instead of the XLR to our audio interface. So that before was the more stock natural sound. This over USB lets you use their Motive software. This is the stock natural and near sound settings. You can hear how this sounds. Again, and just compare the tonal differences between them and also we'll do the uh, mic floor test as well. So one, two, three, sibilance. One, two, three, sibilance. Yeah, and uh, honestly, just judging from that real quick, uh, as you could see in real time, when I was doing that, this pretty much wasn't moving at all. I think out of all of them, um, well, I, I think probably the PC38X did the best at eliminating the background noise because it has an active noise cancellation in it. Uh, but for the actual uh, dead noise, just again, no distortion in the background, no nothing. And it was hovering anywhere from between minus 58 to just minus infinity. So a great job at still eliminating any background noise and having a very, very silent nose uh, nose floor. You can do that. Um, more so the noise floor is what I meant to say. So yes, this, the Shure MV7, again, more expensive, but you just have so much flexibility. And the software here, not very complex, very simple and user-friendly. And just for the price, I think it's very, very hard to beat. All right, guys, so for a quick little recap before we wrap this up with our top five gaming and streaming microphones of the year, three different genres, starting off with the two budget microphones with the Razer Siren Mini and the HyperX SoloCast. Then we had the sort of two-in-one exception with the headset, dropping Sennheiser PC38X. And then the more higher-end options for a gaming and streaming microphone with the Elgato Wave 3. And then the different sort of more premium option with the Shure MV7. And honestly, for whatever sort of budget you're looking at and what you wanna spend on a microphone, we've got you covered from 50 to 250. And in their class, in their genre that came out in 2020, I think these five are hands down some of the best you can buy. Whether you want just straight out of microphone quality or the option to use software and enhance it and EQ it, you have the options here. So I hope this video helped you out and I hope it makes you, you know, make a better purchase decision next time you want to pick up either a new headset or a new gaming and streaming microphone as you venture into 2021, maybe looking to stream full time. So yeah, hope this helped you out. If it did, give this video a big thumbs up to show your support and uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.